In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the dust extractor versus the shop vac, Festool versus Rigid. Now, I know that these are not comparable in price and they shouldn't be comparable at all in their efficiency and the way they work. However, what I'm going to do and hope to do in this video is to tell you all the information that you need to decide whether or not you're going to go with a cheap shop vac for your woodworking or your job site stuff or your shop stuff or if you need something this expensive here and compare and contrast and I have all the technical data for all you tech junkies out there just so that you can really get an idea an in-depth look on the way both of these things operate. Okay, so I've removed the shop back from the bench because we're going to start with the Festool CT26 Clean Tech. So let's go over some information here. First thing I just want to tell you is the storage is one of the things that I like the most on here. Because I use the Festool system, all my sustainers and the Cyclone all stack on top of this unit. It makes it easy for me to transport. And I'll show you uh, the way I roll that into the trailer and everything like that in a few minutes, which helps me out on the job site. It's more efficient. So I'm just gonna take this off for a second so that I can show you the bare bones of the vacuum by itself. Now this hose here doesn't come with the vacuum. This comes with the Cyclone unit. I'm gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. What I'm gonna do here is much like the regular T-Lock sustainers, all you have to do is take that off right there and then lift off and the whole cyclone unit and my sustain will come off and just move right back here and out of the way. And by the way, if you look in the bin, you can see how much dust is really in there. I didn't clean it out yet. I was on a job site yesterday and that thing is still, you know, got plenty of room in there for sawdust. So let's get a little bit more in depth here with this unit. Okay, so this is the Festool CT26. It's the clean tech, and um, it's the, the model is the CT26E. Now, this is a HEPA rated uh, vacuum system. It has a uh, self-clean filter bag. It comes with a main air filter. It has the, uh, one of my favorite features right here, is the auto on and off and the manual mode. So manual mode, you will turn the vacuum on when it's plugged in and you will be able to clean up debris, uh, dust, and any sawdust, whatever. Uh, you could also use it as a wet dry vac. I will never be doing that. So um, if you just want to pick up stuff, then that's the feature you'll be using there. The manual, then you can shut it off right there. But if you leave it in auto like I always do, well for the most part, 99% of the time, this right here is a plug socket. And when you have your tool plugged in, once you activate your tool, so let me just give you a, a quick idea. You have your main power plug of the vacuum that gets plugged into the wall. That's also like 26 feet long, so you can move it anywhere you need to. You have plenty of length. Then you put this in auto mode. You plug your tool into the vacuum right here into the socket. And what happens there is as soon as you activate your tool, let's say the miter saw, you turn it on or your track saw, as soon as you turn it on, you activate that saw. This has a soft startup, starts up the vacuum, and will start the suction mode on the vacuum. Which brings me to another point right here. It's one of the main reasons that I bought this unit is because of the adjustable suction on it. This little switch right here, you can lower the suction all the way down or you can turn it all the way up. Now, if you're asking what that is um, a feature for, it's mostly for sanding and um, the main reason that I decided to go with a unit where you can actually reduce the suction is because of sanding projects down with random orbital sanders and such, you leave a little swirl marks. Now, if you have ever used um, a, a power sander with your shop vac, you know that that suction is so powerful that it sucks that sander right down to the workpiece. So as you're moving, not only are you like glued to that workpiece, it makes it harder for you to move that tool around, it also creates these divots and swirl marks in the finish, in the finished product actually, I should say, because you won't see them uh, in, you know, like to the naked eye until you start to apply stain and finish. That will bring out those little swirl marks. If you ever had that problem, uh, this is something you need to look into. Now, other units do have that, and um, you know, I don't have any experience with those other dust extractors, so I really can't speak about uh, units like the Fiend Turbo or the Bosch system. I don't have um, any uh, knowledge of those, and I've never used them. So, 
Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. It comes with also, I said the filter, I said it comes with the filter bag, which is replaceable. It has like a little blast gate in there. You can just close it up, take it and throw it out. But I also purchased a reusable bag. Now I've had this unit for a year and I've been using it for a year straight and I still haven't replaced the bag yet because that cyclone unit behind me is catching 90 something percent, 95% of the dust. So uh, the bag is not even a quarter of the way full yet, and it's been a year. So that, that's something you know you can keep in mind. The, the bags are expensive. Um, I bought a reusable one for 90 bucks, and this one here you can just once it fills up, uh, it has a little uh, plastic tab that you can take off, dump out the bag, close it back up with the plastic tab, reinsert it, and then it's good to go. And I think this is good for like 500 empties. So you can fill that out. That's that's a long time. It's probably gonna outlast me. Okay, so let's move on here. Uh, the 27 millimeter hose, it's a smooth hose, unlike the, the rigid um, plastic hoses that you get with a shop vac. This hose is also anti-static. Now the 27 millimeter hose comes with it, but in my opinion, you spend the extra money and get the 36 millimeter hose. Now what's the reason for that? Okay, so this is good for your smaller tools, your sanders, your small routers, your trim routers, and um, it's also good for the dominoes. Those all have the smaller ports and they don't create as much uh, large chips of dust. Uh, on a router, a big router, um, also on the track saw and uh, the miter saw, you create larger chips. And what happens is this could be a choke point in here because this on those larger ported machines will fit inside of the port where the 36 millimeter hose will fit on the outside of the port. So what would happen there is you, as you get large chips coming in, they can get trapped in between the inner and outer ports and it creates a choke point and you can lose some suction that way. So I recommend this, you know, that comes with it, 27, just for your domino sander and your small trim routers. The track saw and your um, larger routers, I would recommend your 36 millimeter hose, which is an additional cost. I think it's worth it. Okay, so um, this has on the top an opening here if you don't have sustainers or you don't want to put sustainers on there, it has a hose garage. So if you fold this hose up, you can, you can roll the hose up and it can wrap inside there around that handle and you can completely make it disappear inside. I never do that. However, if you did want to, you could, if you had an extra hose to bring with you to a job site like the 36, um, I would keep the 27 millimeter inside there and then just put the sustainers on top of it so that you always have that out on the job site when you need it. I don't recommend it in your shop because then you'd be taking the sustainers off and have to take it out. The unit is much quieter than any other shop vac that you're ever gonna use. I can tell you right now, I can talk to someone while this is running. Now, I don't have a sound meter with the decibels to give you the decibel rating or anything like that, but you could look it up on Festive's website. I would give you a demonstration of how it sounds compared to the shop vac, but this will be fine on camera and through your speakers. The shop vac will blow out the microphone and will blow out your eardrums there if I don't adjust the volume. And so that's not really a fair comparison because you are not getting the actual 100% sound capacity of what a shop vac sounds like. Uh, 26 liters of capacity, hence CT26, that uh, equals 6.9 gallons. Um, so that's what you can uh, store in there. However, with that cyclone unit attached, that's an additional 5.3 gallon bucket, which I can fill all the way up before I empty. And I will show you some footage of that on how easy it is to empty. Uh, it has swiveling casters. These are really good casters. They roll over everything. It has a brake on it. And if you see right here, you just got to lift it up a little bit. You hit that brake and you can roll it around anywhere. Then if you don't want it to move, like right now, you push that little brake in and that's it. It's not moving anywhere. This is great following you around at the job site at the shop when you're using a track saw or your sanders. It rolls, it doesn't tip. And the hose, when it sits inside even the cyclone unit where I use it, it just creates a perfect balance and rolls around the shop. It has a high performance turbine, uh, which gives you constant and consistent suction. 138 CFMs of volume or cubic feet per minute. Uh, you can retrofit this 
to make it a Bluetooth unit. So if you have any cordless tools, like say uh, you're going cordless on your track saw and it has the Bluetooth mode on the track saw, uh, Festool has it, um, Makita has it, where you can sync that by putting the module in right here. You just got to replace this little panel right there and then you can buy the little uh, button to sync it that goes on the hose. That's an additional cost. I'm not gonna include any of that in the cost here. Um, the sustainer docks with the Cyclone. I already talked about that. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, you can use it as a wet dry vac. Uh, like I said, I'll never be using that as a wet dry vac. This weighs, uh, they say it weighs 30.64 pounds, right? But um, that's what's on the website. I don't feel that it weighs that much, uh, but I mean, there's a handle in the middle too to carry it. It's definitely close to what they're saying. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to put it on a scale, but if they're saying it's 30.64 pounds, that's what it is. Okay, we talked about the adjustable suction on there. So now, let's talk about cost, okay? So the CT26E, the cost before tax, so pre-tax, this unit right here with the hose, the air filter, which is internal, and the filter bag, $799, okay? I know that's like a punch in the face right there for a, a dust extractor or what most people will just say is, is a vacuum. Okay, so that's just for the unit itself with the three things that it comes with, which is the filter, the hose, and the bag. Now, paired with this unit right here, you can see inside here is the cyclonic unit, and that traps all, or I would say at least 95% of all the dust that's going in here. Um, this is my TSO 20 set for the parallel guide system. I always keep that on there because I usually just, anything that's related to the track saw, I keep on top of here so it's easily accessible. Because for the most part, this thing's following me around with the track saw. When I hook it up to my miter saw, it's not really moving. Okay, so paired with the CT Cyclone, uh, the Cyclone unit itself right here, which comes with the base unit that goes into the, the docking system of the dust extractor comes with the bin, it comes with a plastic bag, and it also comes with a lid for this right here, this bin. Uh, this is 5.3 gallons of, of uh, storage for the sawdust. This is the cyclonic unit in here where all the action happens, and it comes with this hose right here, which attaches this unit to the vacuum. So this whole setup right here, not including my TSO, is $419 pre-tax. So with the extra 36 millimeter anti-static smooth hose that I recommend you get if you're purchasing this is $229 pre-tax. So that gives you a total cost pre-tax of everything you see here on this table, including what's inside the vacuum, which is the filter and the bag, $1,447 pre-tax. And that's minus any shipping if you get it from a company that's not offering free shipping on some of the stuff. Most of the companies that you will get this for, and I'm gonna put links in, in, uh, in the description for all of these tools that you're seeing me use here, um, they're gonna offer you free shipping. So for the most part, $1,447 pre-tax, or whatever your local tax is, add that into that cost and that will be your cost. Okay, now let's talk about the rigid shop vac. All right, so this is a 14 gallon shop vac. It's not HEPA rated, but you can get a HEPA filter and HEPA bags for it to make it HEPA rated. Um, six horsepower, it's great powerful suction. This is, these units are mainly for cleaning up dirt and debris and they do a great job of that. Um, it's a wet dry vac, it's it's loud as hell, and it's not much you can do about it. Uh, you can buy a diffuser for the back, but it doesn't really help much. So uh, I know someone that has it tried that, and I didn't buy it because of the fact that it was a waste of money, I thought. Um, they, they go for about 15 bucks. Uh, you can get these in your local big box store, and I've seen these on sale as low as like $89 on Black Friday, which is, it's good if you need one, absolutely, uh, you know. It comes with um, accessories, uh, it comes with, um, uh, regular hose, it comes with um, all kinds of different uh, nozzles for cleaning, such as these vacuum style attachments. These are, these are great for um, moving a lot of material. 
at once. So if you have big piles of sawdust, uh, if you have a tool that creates a ton of sawdust, like uh, a router table, this will do the trick. It, it moves a lot of volume of air at one time. It could be bad on certain tools with back pressure. Okay, so uh, it doesn't have any anti-static hoses. It does not come with an anti-static hose. These are not anti-static. Ask me how I know. Been shocked plenty of times. However, the anti-static Festool hoses do work in these ports because the Festool hoses are the same size. So you can always purchase an anti-static hose for your shop vac. It has swiveling caster, so it moves around. Comes with a filter the round filter that's internal, but does not come with filtered bags. Now, if you have this unit and you're not using a filtered bag besides the filter that's in there, you're doing yourself a really big injustice. Because I can tell you right now, for years, I didn't know that you really need a bag inside here. So I was using it with just a round filter that was in there. This would fill up with sawdust. The filter would fill up with sawdust. It would blow sawdust out the back of the unit when it got full. And then to empty it and clean the filter, I was replacing it more times than I was cleaning it. As soon as I put a filter bag in there, all I had to do, the filter stayed clean, the bag would fill up, I'd throw the bag in the garbage, get a new one, put it in there. The bags are cheap. You can get like three bags or four bags for like 20 bucks. So it's easy to empty. You know, just, just as the, the cyclone was easy to empty, this is just as easy. Two tabs, you flip on the sides and you take the top of the housing off where the motor is and you dump the bucket. Or you just replace the bag and clean the filter. So let's go over, because there's not much more to talk about with this. It's on and off. There's no adjustable suction. Um, it doesn't have the feature where you can, at least this model does not, where you can plug your tool into it and it would activate the vacuum at the same time that you activated your tool. What you can do to combat that is purchase one of these IVAC switches that will plug into the vacuum and then plug into the wall and then you plug your tool into the IVAC switch and you will activate the vacuum as soon as you activate your tool. So let's go over cost since there really isn't uh, anything else to really say about this. Um, let's go with the vacuum unit itself with the hoses and attachments. Um, it's $119 um, on regular price most of the time, pre-tax $119. On sale, like I said, I've seen them as low as $89. So sale times are the, definitely the times to purchase these. Okay, paired with the dust stopper, which I was using for a long time also, that was a $56 purchase. And uh, the five gallon pail was $5.75. Bringing you for this unit and the dust stopper with the bucket to a total of $180.75 pre-tax. So you're probably looking at about $200 for this entire setup right here as opposed to about 1,500 or more with the Festool unit on my left. Okay, so this uh, will cost you probably about $45 on Amazon. I will put a link for that uh, for those of you who have just this setup right here and so that you can use that if you choose to. Okay, so that's it for all the technical specs. Now let's get into which one of these is for you and do you need to spend that kind of crazy money on a dust extractor. Okay, let's go over the pros and cons. The pros of this unit right here. It is cheap, it's readily available. You can pick it up at your local big box store and it works great with the dust stopper and it's still a value. You can add this in and you're still gonna be under $300 for this entire unit. Now, the cons about this, it, if you choose to use it with the dust stopper, it does not move around the, the shop or the job site with you very well. So um, this has no wheels on it. If you remember, I uh, made a platform with wheels to house both of these so it roll underneath my MFT and move around me in the shop. That proved to be very awkward and bulky because my shop is not big. Uh, it worked well for you know sitting underneath the MFTs and just rolling it out when I needed, but I had to scrap that idea because I could not bring this with me to the job site. So, uh, very powerful suction on that uh, wet dry vac. I would use this for a wet dry vac if I needed to suck up water. Uh, warranty wise, you have a limited lifetime warranty on the rigid, uh, which just like any other tool, you have to fill out the registration form for that to be activated. Okay, so um, who should purchase the shop vac? Most of you already have the shop vac and if you stay with it, that's fine. Uh, most of you use it in your shop and you hook it up uh, dedicated to a, a miter saw or um, you know maybe a track saw. 
if you're just um, doing woodwork on the weekends and uh, it's a hobby or uh, you do small jobs and you know things like that then I would recommend you stay with the shop vac because it's more versatile for cleaning up the shop you can use it on uh, tools uh, if you're looking to get into the real fine finish work and stuff this is not going to cut it when you're sanding because of the scratch marks and patterns and swivels and uh, divots that this has made with my sander because of the powerful suction. So for me, you know, that was one of the reasons I turned to this unit here. Transportation. Uh, every time I go out to a job site and have to bring this with me, it's very awkward. It has to sit like right in the middle of my trailer and I have to bungee cord it to something. Where this unit here... for rolling this right up into the ramp and underneath the little uh, storage partition there under a shelf it fits perfect and it just locks in place and it doesn't move and I have a strap going across the outside of it just so in the event that I make a sharp turn it doesn't tip over when I make that turn. Other than that, it doesn't move at all. The noise, if you're concerned about the noise level, get yourself some good hearing protection. Even with this, when I'm in the shop using the tools, I always wear hearing protection just for the fact that uh, you just want to save as much of your hearing as you possibly can. If you're doing this you know, professionally every day, even if you're doing it as a, a hobbyist you know, on the weekends, you're still going to damage your hearing if you don't protect them from the sounds of these machines. Everything is loud, louder than your body wants to be hearing. So this thing, there's, there's really no making this quiet. Okay, so uh, cost effective. If you're not using it much, this is definitely um, a good way to go. Why did I transfer over to this unit? Well, number one, um, in the Festool system, this works perfect with everything for me. I can justify this purchase because I do this professionally as a business. So I'm using this day in and day out. My finished sanding is top notch now. I have no marks because I turn my suction all the way down, which is something you can't do on the shop vac. Um, I like that you can plug your tool right into the unit itself and that gets plugged into the wall. This moves around the shop with me and also on the job site with ease. As far as the storage of the dust, this is 5.3 gallons in here. This, this is big. Now when I fill this up, even though this is a 5 gallon bucket on the dust stopper, when I fill this up almost to the top, I still have suction. The reason that I don't go all the way until I hit the bottom of the cycling unit is because when I open it up to dump it, I don't want that to have all the dust on the bottom and then fall all over the floor or get airborne. So I fill it up to just about where the handle is and then I dump it out. The dust stopper on the other hand, if it fills up just about halfway, I start to lose a lot of suction and a lot of the dust starts backing up and actually blowing out of the back of this unit here and filling up the bag rapidly. Even with the dust stopper, I have changed the bag out at least three times in six months. I've been using this now for just about a year and I haven't changed the bag once and it's only a quarter of the way full, which tells me that this is collecting everything and there's no dust around. And you can see how clean this unit is. There's no dust blowing out of here or around the unit. And if you see how dusty this is, the dust is flying out and around. Now, like I said, I can justify the cost. Now, if you don't feel like you can justify the cost, then I wouldn't go with something like this. There are other cheaper units out there that you can add a, a Cyclone to that yeah, there's the Dust Deputy Cyclone unit, uh, which is cheaper than this. Uh, the, the Fiend Turbo, I'm not sure how good it is, or the Bosch, how good it is, dust extractors. They have adjustable suction for sanding and the same features here where you can plug it in. I just don't have any experience with them, so I can't comment on those. If you ask me, I won't have the answers for you. I don't have any technical specs on those either to compare. A little final thought here is it's basically these units are for professionals or if you are a hobbyist who just really wants your work to be perfect and you can justify the cost of this, if you can afford to do it, then go ahead and do it. I always tell my subscribers and friends and, and other workers, always buy the best tool at the best quality that you can afford 
at that time. Because if you buy something cheap and you're not happy with the results, you're gonna try to sell it, lose money, or bring it back, and then on the buying this anyway. So if you need this, go for it. If you're okay with this, stay with it. All right, guys, so I hope I gave you a good insight here on uh, both of these dust extraction units, shop back versus dust extractor. Like I said, it's, you're not, I'm not comparing these so that I can tell you that, oh, you gotta spend this much money on, on a dust extractor because this thing is great because, you know, don't buy a shop vac because it's cheap and it's loud. This, is, this video is to help you decide which one is best for you. I'm not trying to sell you either one of these. I have no affiliations to either one of these companies. Uh, take that the way you will, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this helps you make a decision. All right, guys, so I will see you next time. Definitely, if you are not subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button. Hit the picture of a notification bell. That will notify you every time I upload a new video, which is pretty frequently, and I hope you guys enjoy these types of videos because I will do more of them more frequently on a lot of the tools that I have in the shop and I use out in the field. All right, guys, so check out the channel. Plenty of videos for you. I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me in the shop.